it was Swiss hikers who carried the first aluminium water bottles in the early part of the 20th century. In the rough and tumble of the mountains, they proved lightweight and durable. They can be reused endlessly, and they can also be recycled. So making one is not a wasted effort. Some of those first trailblazing bottles have survived until today, reminding us that this kind of container is made to last. Today's bottle starts with an aluminium puck seven centimetres in diameter. The puck travels down a chute into a punch press. It uses 600 tonnes of force to stretch the puck into a cylinder with a bottom. A blade chops the open end down to the correct size, and then a tool pushes it onto a conveyor that sends it down the line. The aluminium cylinder lands on a wheel, which relays it to the next station. There. Machinery moves the cylinder's open end into a position for tools to squeeze it into a bottleneck. The tools pinch the metal a total of 26 times to draw the open end down to half its original diameter. This gradual forming process results in less stress on the metal. The last tool presses a threaded ring into the inside of the bottle for screwing on the cap. The process leaves the threaded neck a lot thicker than the rest of the bottle, so it will withstand heavy usage. Now the bottles move into a wash station, where they're cleaned to remove the lubricating oil from the forming process. Then they travel through a dryer. And after a few minutes, the bottles emerge clean and ready for the next operation. The interior wall is about to be lined with a micro-thin high-tech polymer. This revolving device picks up each bottle using suction and delivers it to an individual sprayer. The spray nozzle coats the inside of this container with the polymer. The liner has been specially formulated to be chemically inert, which means it won't absorb any flavors. At this point, the coating is powdery and you could wipe it off with your finger, but that's just temporary. Once it's baked, the powder will solidify and bond completely to the inside of the bottle. The bottles move through an oven that's heated to 180 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. The liner doesn't add much weight to the bottle. Here, one is weighed before being lined and after and the difference is just a few grams. Now the bottles spin by a gauntlet of spray guns for an even coat of paint. As with the inner liner, this outer veneer will need to be baked on. When it dries, the paint takes on a glossy finish. An automated squeegee silk screens designs onto the bottles. A jet of air dries the ink between printings, as the artwork is built up using different colours. Now it's time to screw on the cap, and a worker performs a final inspection of the product. From a small aluminium puck to a metal flask. Incredibly, this transformation has taken just three hours. And in its various styles, this reusable bottle is sure to make a lasting impression. I'll drink to that.